friends, so today I'm going to be going over how I made the leggies, the squishy leggies and the moving kind of tail for uh, Mewtwo. As some of you may or may not know, I am making a Mecha Mewtwo cosplay and I am not doing like the original canon art, I am cosplaying from this art. This art is by Kawiku or Kakiwa. They're the same person, they changed over to Kakiwa at some point. And I did get in contact with the artist and they have approved of me cosplaying their art so I was really really excited about that because this art just looks so cool and I was like Dude, at some point in my life like I need to make some type of mecha cosplay and look I'm, I'm halfway there! I'm not halfway there at all. This is all upholstery foam. It's nice and squishy. This is the stuff you put in like couch cushions and stuff. <laughs> I am not completely done with this. just wanted to get something up for like a work vlog type thing. I'm going to be doing this quite differently than my Daedric armor. With my Daedric armor, I knew what I was doing the whole time, kind of, and I would upload a video a week and it all kind of made sense. This build is really not going to make sense at all because I started with the tail and then I worked on the legs. I'm about to make the stilts because I'm making digitigrade stilts to go with it so my legs are always like this and I, I get a little taller and I look more like an animal. <laughs> So after the stilts, I'll probably then like work on the helmet. So it's not going to make sense and I'll have a follow-up video with this on how I further kind of fixed some things. Like you see how the tail's twisting? Then I'm also going to put in one more support so that it sits more like this because right now it just kind of wants to fall. So one more support should keep that up. <laughs> so I'm going to cover the foam, like this foam right here, I'm going to cover it with some stretchy fabric and then on top of that I will be putting EVA foam armor which you see on the legs there. The corset has nothing to do with the tail or the legs. I'm just shaping everything to me wearing a corset. So anyway, before we hop into the video I'm going to plug my Patreon where you can go see behind the scenes stuff. But yeah, let's go ahead and hop right into the video. So for the sake of video editing, I am starting with the legs even though if you have a keen eye for all things strange, you can see that at this point I already started the tail, but just ignore that for now. The first thing that I did was struggle to dress a lifeless taped dummy of myself with stretch leggings that I will wear underneath this costume and the upholstery foam will get glued to. If you would like to see me wrapped in tape or just have a fascination with the color pink, feel free to watch my duct tape dummy video. It's a fun and easy process and it makes a somewhat accurate dress form in the shape of your body. After ages of struggle, I finally managed to squeeze a pair of leggings onto the pink sausages. After that, I prayed to the crafting gods that no package delivery person or neighbor would come visit as I laid a lifeless cast of myself onto the floor and traced my patterns onto it. These patterns will soon be traced onto my upholstery foam and they will make up the bulk of the legs. Yes, feet people, those are my feet. Join my Patreon for more feet! Once Sebastian has properly fluffed my 2 inch upholstery foam that I got for unnecessarily cheap from Joann's with a coupon because holy guacamole, upholstery foam is so expensive. I put my pattern onto the foam and I traced it out. I should have invested in an electric carver for this, but scissors work just as well. It just leaves a few blisters on my hands. <laughs> Hey, so I don't know how fursuit makers do this. My living room is covered in upholstery foam bits that will never ever escape. I have a few hot glue burns and it takes at least 10 hours of holding to get this stuff to dry and cool and actually stick. But once it's on there, oh, it's on there. You can't take that off. Mm -mm, nope. I'm happy with it, at least. This is the general shape of the leg of the Mewtwo, and it's it's not bad. Um, it's you know we got some thick hips going on, and that's all I really wanted. And then the knee shape. This is kind of how the knee looks. And keep in mind, I will be putting stretch fabric over this, and then on top of that, I'm putting foam armor pieces. So. If it's a little lumpy, which I still have to smoothen it out because it's actually bugging, it's okay. It's gonna be covered by like 14 things, so it really doesn't matter. Yeah, I went ahead and did one leg so that I could practice. 
I have played with this stuff before on something that didn't matter, but now that it's something that does matter, I am trying to be as careful as possible and not ruin it and go in and just do way too much and just absolutely fuck it up. So anyway, I'm going to uh, shape this down a little bit more and then um, do the other leg. Sebastian. Hey. Psst, psst, psst. I know you can hear me over there. You got your tail flicking and stuff. Hey. <gasps> wow. <laughs> Now the painstaking task of carving foam to make it look like creature's legs begins. I cut away at the edges of the foam until it was a little more rounded. I do add one more small layer at the edge of the knee and also at the hip to give it that more pronounced curve. I also do any gluing touch-ups and binge some wonderful YouTubers while doing this project as it literally takes 14,000 years. For the tail, I laid down and had Mike trace my back, including the booty, and sketched out Mewtwo's tail while somewhat eyeballing the art I'm cosplaying from and the original canon Mewtwo. Once I cut out the pattern and divided the tail into sections, I wanted to make the tail like able to move. So you know those cool little snakes you got when you were a kid and they were at the zoo and they wiggled and stuff and they like pinched your fingers and made you seriously rethink toys because they just want to like kill you? Um, this tail is a little bit different than the normal tails that you see in that style. It has to defy gravity to stand up and then swoop down. This is why the first sections closest to my back are quite a bit thicker with not as many divided sections. And then closer to the bottom of the tail is when the sections got smaller and smaller to allow for more articulation. I put the patterns onto some floor mat EVA foam as floor mats are generally thicker and can hold their weight a little bit better. Everything got attached to each other with strips of elastic. This was just hot glued on with Gorilla Glue's hot glue sticks, which are seriously the best hot glue sticks I have ever used. You will rip your project before you rip the hot glue. I didn't film much of the harness because I was honestly just trying to figure it out and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. So I do go over at the very end of the video and kind of break down how I made it and shaped it and everything. But here I am just sanding down the edges of the ABS plastic that I used for the butt plate and that the tail is attached to, which then gets attached to my waist. Here you can see the line of screws where I attach the plastic to the tail itself. Here, if you can deal with the seizure inducing footage of my webcam trying its absolute best in life, I'm attaching the webbing to the ABS plastic. I carve a tiny channel for the harness to go through on the tail itself. This way it's not putting nearly as much pressure on the ABS plastic, leaving it to possibly fall apart at the base of the tail there. And that way it's also hugging the ABS plastic against my back. You're in my crafting spot, Sebastian. I'll save you the monotonous process of gluing the foam onto the tail as one, it took forever, and two, my SD card filled up and I didn't realize it, but I basically just patterned the sections onto my two inch upholstery foam, cut them out, and then glued them onto the tail. All right, so a couple hours later, late hair, wow. I got the tail all foam. So all the little sections are glued on and it took a really long time, but it's fine. I'm gonna have to put in one more support right here and put that around my body, but I'm so surprised it's staying up. I wasn't expecting it to stay up. Ooh, and it moves still. It's got some movement in it. Now I just have to carve it and make it a little more circular. So now I'm just rounding out the tail a little bit, trying to get it more into shape. I'll definitely go over this again, round it out a little more. I just have to do a little more thinking with my brainular organ so that I can figure out how exactly I'll do the armor on this and the LEDs. By the way, I did make an Instagram for my cats. It's called Forging Beans. It's where my more artsy photos of them go. <laughs> So back to the corset not having anything to do with this being on, I will explain because I don't know if I got good footage 
of what exactly I did to attach this thing. So this right here, I have currently only one strap holding this tail on. I'm going to incorporate three more straps. So it's just on a piece of webbing. Thank you, Jim, for the webbing. I greatly appreciate it. I'm gonna need it so much. So I have um, webbing and it's on a nice little quick release button. So if I push it, it'll fit and fly off of me. I have the webbing attached to this piece of ABS plastic. It's, it's literally like, can you hear that? It's like hard and it doesn't bend at all. I did end up shaping it to my booty by heating it up with a heat gun for a very, very long time. And then I just bent it and it shapes my booty. So my butt's in there somewhere. The tail is actually hooked on with a shit ton of screws. <laughs> In between these upholstery foam pieces is one singular piece of floor mat EVA foam, so the stuff you can find at Harbor Freight. And then hooked in between each section of EVA foam is elastic so that it's able to do this cool thing and move back and forth and stuff. I'm going to put one more strap up here to go around my waist and then two straps which will connect down here and kind of like wrap around my crotch to just keep it in place a little bit better. And that's about it. I'm definitely probably going to be putting suspenders on the pants as they, they've been slipping down a lot. All right, so now that I got you here for the like maybe one person who will watch to the end, feel free to check out my Patreon where I post um, a lot of behind the scenes content but yeah, I do written tutorials as well. Um, I have a few coming up that aren't going to be public. Uh, they'll just be for Patreon. So yeah, that's uh, all I really wanted to say. But um, yay. Okay. And thank you so much to my patrons for making this video possible. Adam Hunt, Aliar, Anime Crush, Anon, Blue Panda, Calvin Lewis, Daedric Grill, David Rosenbaum, Eric, Jenny Lynn, Jim W, Jordy the Trekkie, Kalika Kaiser, Malice Merton, Mark, Nathan M, Ninja Rookie, Nanamon, Rob Thompson, Robert Gallardo, Rusty Shackelford, Sakura, Valdemir, and Yandere Dream Girl. Thank you guys so much. Have a super awesome rest of the day. Go do awesome creative things, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!